A boss is insisting the EC should be able to use the database. We hear from both sides and some aspects. Stay with us tonight. Also, another set of police officers have dragged the Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Akufu Dampare, to court over what they say are delayed promotions. Tonight, we're delving to the matters. Stay with us here on, on Ghana tonight. And uh, also, uh, we're going to the communities in some parts of the Savannah region that have been cut off as heavy dumper causes destruction to roads and bridges, leaving residents no option than to rely on canoes and all the dangers that come with canoe transportation in this country from th that area. Stay with us here on Ghana Tonight. As always, let's hear from you. We're very, very interactive. The hashtag we're using is Ghana Tonight on Facebook and Twitter. Let's get talking. Settle for Ghana Briefs. Five ring leaders arrested for staging a march at the Abening in the Western region in support of Russia mercenary group Wagner are to reappear in court next month. The suspects charged with treason are currently in police custody in Takrade. The details which have been captured in an investigative piece by Factor Ghana details infiltration into the country and crowdfunding among others aimed at building support for the controversial group. As part of the investigations we chanced on a telegram channel that also exposed the um, modus operandi of the group uh, which uh, involved some funding of the activities, some wire transfers to the ringleaders via Western Union. Uh, in total, we understand through some crowdfunding, they were able to raise about a, a 6,000 US dollars, which was used in executing uh, 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 the, the protest. The Electoral Commission has denied sending defective registration gadgets to opposition National Democratic Congress strongholds to disenfranchise its supporters in limited voter registration. Addressing the media, Chairperson Jen Manson said the commission did not receive any injunction suit from the courts to warrant a postponement of the exercise. The allegations being made against us, including accusations of our working to disenfranchise eligible voters, to sending 40 kids to the stronghold of a specific political party, are false. A number of districts reported having 40 kids on the first two days. These kids were not located only in the stronghold of a political party, of a particular political party, and the evidence is there for all to verify. Some 40 chief inspectors in the Ghana Police Service have sued the Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Okufu Dampari, over what they describe as refusal of the service to promote them. In a writ filed at the High Court in Kumasi, the police officers claim they have been excluded from a series of promotion prompted by the service to grant special amnesty to police officers who had obtained degrees before 2020 after they were enrolled into the service. It is their case that despite serving between 25 to 30 years, the police administration have promoted their junior colleagues under the same amnesty but had refused to grant them entry to the police academy to facilitate their promotions to assistant superintendent of police. The plaintiffs per the writ are urging the court to order the IGP and other defendants to promote them, grant them direct access to the police academy, and further restore their lost income following the failure to promote them. <music> Members of the Pensioner Bondholders Forum have rejected another attempt by government to rope them into a new debt exchange program. They have warned government against any situation that will result in pensioners not receiving their matured coupons and principles on due dates. Under no circumstances should you invite us again that you have reopened something so we should come or if we want to come. We are not part of the people who should be invited in this, uh, 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 to this reopening. Once you granted the exemption, it is ended. You have no negotiation to do with those people. 
The Trade Union Congress and the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association are requesting government to review the single spine salary structure to address wage gap between men and women in the public sector. The two labor unions were reacting to the statistical service data which show that women receive 10.5% less salary than men in the sector. It's been over 10 years since we had the, the single spine. There have been calls for its review. Some work was started. Some of us had issue with how the committee was formed. We thought the right body should have been the public sector joint standing negotiating committee. That notwithstanding, we must um, be looking at how to review the single spine, not for the worst, but for the best. There's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. Coming up next year on Ghana Tonight, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Jane Adukwe Mensa, has been explaining why the Electoral Commission cannot rely on the National Identification Authority's database for the voter registration exercise. But the NIA boss insists that the database can be relied upon. We're going to be hearing from both sides and some experts on this matter. Yeah, on, on Ghana tonight. So let's start off uh, first with the Electoral Commission. Earlier today, they addressed the press ad addressing a number of issues that the NDC, uh, LPG, and then also APC and other political parties, in fact, and some individuals that have been taking the Electoral Commission to court because of the issues related to the limited voter registration exercise, which started just about a week ago. The EC chair has denied sending defective registration gadgets to opposition National Democratic Congress NDC strongholds to disenfranchise its supporters in the limited voter registration exercise. This was at the press conference earlier today. Gina Dukwe Mensa had this to say. Take a look. After six days of the ongoing registration, the Electoral Commission says it has been able to put over 183,000 persons onto the country's electoral roll. The process, which started on Tuesday last week, was fraught with challenges. Challenges which the opposition NDC largely asserted to as orchestrated, aimed at disenfranchising first-time voters, particularly in its stronghold. Accusations which have been parried by the Electoral Commission. Chairperson of the Commission, Jean Mensah, says any such claims cannot be true. The allegations being made against us including accusations of our working to disenfranchise eligible voters, to sending 40 kids to the stronghold of a specific political party are false. A number of districts reported having 40 kids on the first two days. These kids were not located only in the stronghold of a political party, of a particular political party, and the evidence is there for all to verify. On arguments by the former president, John Mahama, that perhaps the guarantor system is still quite the best way in registering persons onto the electoral roll, the Electoral Commission cited instances or media reports of minors being registered onto the electoral roll and used that as basis to suggest that if you can go to a district office with two guarantors just to get onto the electoral roll, you can go to the district office to get a Ghana card. As a commission, we don't think so. We are, we are mindful of the fact that the National Identification Authority had some budgetary constraints and they were not able to, you know, register. They have not been able to register for a while. But we are also mindful and we are also well aware that over the last two weeks, they've kick-started their activities in the districts and they are registering persons who have turned, I think, 15 years above in the districts. So we do not, I do not believe, and so the cards are available. On the injunction application, the EC said it was not served. As we speak, you know, the commission was not, did not become privy to that documentation or that service, that writ until Wednesday, because on Monday the commission was on the field and on Tuesday, we were on the field, and it was only Wednesday after the exercise that we became privy to that service. 
We've known for a long time that we had registration. Why wait till a day before the exercise to serve on a Friday when there's a lot of field activity going on? She adds the commission will undertake a continuous registration process to register more persons next year. In the lead up to the 2024 presidential and parliamentary elections, we will roll out a continuous registration of voters for several months in the district offices. Additionally, we will undertake a mop-up exercise in selected electoral areas, and particularly in areas that have difficulty in accessing our district offices. The commission is, however, warning guarantors against endorsing minors. Eric Mawinagbeta, TV3 News, headquarters of the Electoral Commission. Comprehensive report there by Mawinagbeta. Now, let's take you through the statistics as per the Electoral Commission's own account earlier today. That so far, these are the numbers since the re limited registration exercise began. This is it. Total registration of voters so far, 182,831. That's since the process began just about a week ago. The Ashanti region tops the numbers with 29,255, the highest number of persons who have been registered within this period. The Northeast region follows with 4,244. That's about 2. Point, in fact, that's the lowest. Um, but that's 2.3%. That's the Northeast region, 2.3% being the lowest, and the Ashanti region being the highest. Now, let me give you an idea of how the original breakdown of this 182,831 really looks like. This is it. That's according to the Electoral Commission's own account of how the regional distribution is and how the situation looks like. As we speak now, it appears that there is a lot more questions um, that the NDC and other political parties are for the Electoral Commission. This is it. Edwiji Tamaklo is going to be joining us shortly. He is the Director of Legal Affairs of the NDC. The Western region follows the Ashanti region in that order um, with 11,644. Western North, 6,491. Central region, 17,590. The Greater Accra region, 27,264 out of the a little over 828,000 that have registered so far. Then you have what, the voter region 12,681, OT region 4,427, and then also the Eastern region 19,327, the Ashanti region 29,255, and the Bono region. 6,580 voters, eligible voters that have registered, and the Bono East region, 7,291, Savannah region, 400 and, that's 4,655, the Northern region, 12,982. That also follows up with the Northeast region, has 4,244 eligible voters registered so far, the Upper East region, 8,639, and the Upper West region, 5,241. That's the total that of the 1,000, that's 182,831. 182,831 so far, and that's the regional breakdown you see with the Ashanti region uh, being the highest and followed by the Greater Accra region in that order. Now, Professor Kenatefa, who is Executive Secretary of the National Education Authority, has been also speaking about how come the EC is not relying on its data? This is something that has been going on for quite a while now as to why the EC is not plugging into that database of the NIA. And this is what he had to say. Less of Ghanaians to present themselves for registration. I've indicated that the, within the space, there are people who have not gone to register possibly because they find no real need for a Ghana card. It is possible that some people are not presenting themselves because they don't think that it is necessary. It is also possible that those who were told some time ago not to register, to boycott the Ghana card, that they have not been told by their political masters to go back and get the Ghana card, even though 
those political masters might have gone together. I know some politicians who were part of a so-called stubborn academy who have gone to NIA to register and have taken the Ghana cards, but have not made public statements to the effect that they have done so, nor encouraging their constituents to go and get the Ghana card. Professor Tefa maintains that the voters' registration process will be less cumbersome if the EC decides to plug into its database. The Electoral Commission, as soon as it is satisfied with what we have done and a request that we should transmit data to them, will enter into the appropriate protocols, the contractual agreements. The technology exists, it is working, that's what we have worked, we've used with the other cognate institutions that I have mentioned. We can, with a click of a button, give the data to the Electoral Commission. Well, what we have observed, at least within the last few days since this exercise began, is that a number of people who are showing up to register do not have the Ghana card. So they are relying on the guarantors. And if you are coming from a long distance, it means you have to foot the bills, the transportation bills of your guarantors, two of them, to accompany you to the center. Now, Jane Mensah, the EC chair, had a response to Professor Kenatefa's assertion as to why they are not relying on the NIA's database for this exercise. Take a look. The database is not done. The registration for the national identification card was not done on polling station basis. I think we all know that anywhere you found yourself in the country, you could register for the Ghana card. However, the EC voter card is done on polling station basis. It drills down to a person's polling station. And so it enables the commission to know the number of registrants in each polling station and plan adequately for them. You are well aware that at the point of voting, we have what we call the biometric verification devices and we feed in persons, every person's details from that particular polling station to, in the kits. And so when you come to vote, your, 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 your biometrics are verified. Your fingerprints and your face is verified. We are not able to do this with the Ghana card because as I mentioned, the Ghana card is not done on polling station basis, which is unfortunate because I believe in the planning of these things, we should have been able to judge or and come to that discussion that let us do the Ghana card on polling station basis. Well, so that's Jenna de Quemes, that So she agrees that there was no planning, there was no coordination between the two institutions, essentially. Edwin Eduji Tamaklo is the director of legal affairs of the NDC. It's a private legal practitioner as well. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. First off, the EC chair is saying that, first of all, this is not a mass registration or, or a full-blown one, and that... This is not the last registration before election 2024. And so your assertion that there is a grand scheme to disenfranchise eligible voters ahead of election 2024 is, is practically baseless. That's, that's what she says. The chairperson of the Electoral Commission has this regrettable notion that she is the Lord of Lords, the Queen of Queens. What she had forgotten is that her conduct is subject to the rule of law. As we speak, we have what we call the CI-126, which amended CI-91. The thing that she's saying are not grounded in law. The law doesn't recognize anything like mass registration or whatsoever. The law is clear. First of all, Regulation 30 of CI 91, as amended by CI 126, provides in clear terms that C 
she must revise the register annually. Question, has she done that? She has not. For two years running, Madam J. Mensah has not done what her own constitutional instrument requires her to do. So what is she talking about? Alfred, look, if you permit me, let me just read Revelation 30. Revelation 31 provides, quote, the commission shall revise the register of voters annually. Annually. Mm -hmm. Question. 2021, the last time she did a match, the, the compilation of a new register was the year 2020, correct? Correct. From the year 2020, has she revised the register in 2021? No. Did she revise the register in 2022? No. So even what is required by law under Regulation 31 of CI 91 as amended by CI 126, mm -hmm. she has not complied with it. So where from this notion of I will do a mass registration next year, I will do this. Regrettably, Madam Jemesa considers herself above the laws of this country. Obviously, she doesn't even understand the laws that govern her own activities. Where in CI 91, as amended by CI 126, does it provide for the thing that she's talking about? Where in the law? Is that provision for it? The uh, law is simple, as far as Regulation 31 is concerned, that do a revision of the register annually. Did she do it in 2021? No. Did she do it in 2022? No. So what is she talking about? She herself doesn't even understand the law that governs her activities. She doesn't. And she had this notion of impunity for which she's running. And I, I listened to her, the excuses that she was providing. First of all, from her own statement today, she admits that by limiting the registration to the districts, some people would definitely be disenfranchised. And that is why she quickly now says that, oh, there will be a mop-up exercise. Alfred, in 2020, Madame J. Mensa got the Special Budget Committee of Parliament to approve in excess of $74 million. She contracted a French company called Thales to supply the registration kits for the purposes of the 2020 registration exercise. Those kits are in very good conditions. Alfred, from the year 2020, had there been any registration again? No. So it does not lie with Madame J. Mensa to say, oh, uh, at the end of the day, Ghanaians will not be disenfranchised. No. Alfred, she herself, and, and you see, sometimes I don't know who prepares her speeches. The speech she read today obviously was not prepared by herself. Right. Listen to her carefully. She said, in Tamale, the metropolis, yes. made up of almost four constituencies, mm -hmm. Tamale Central, Tamale North, Tamale South, Sagnarigu, the first day, the kids broke down, internet connectivity, so what did she do? Yes. She brought, listen to her, she brought mm. four new, after having spoken to, to Harold Yes, she, she brought she said four that. new registration kits. And that was enough for her to reduce the backlog. What does it tell her in the first place? That the more kits you have, the better is it. Okay. I see. But you see, do you know? On that point, I wanted now, to, I wanted to do, hold you on that, on that particular point because she says that w with, with the current circumstances the Electoral Commission finds itself now, the registration that you want, I mean, together with the other political parties, you're proposing 
and some CSOs demanding that this registration be done at the electoral areas. The EC cannot do that now because of the current circumstances they find themselves in. So they, they are financially constrained. They don't, they don't have money. That's what she says. This woman is taking the patience of Ghanaians for granted. Stay. Regulation 2 says, quote, the commissions are designated registration centers for the purposes of registering voters and may designate any places it considers appropriate as a registration center. Two, critical. In designating a place as registration center, the commission shall, shall mandatory, mm -hmm. take into consideration the suitability of the place for use as a polling station. Alfred. Do you know that by reason of Madame Germain's decision to conduct the registration exercise in districts on election day, there is going to be chaos? Do you know the chaos? No. You, Alfred, will be thinking that you are supposed to vote in a particular polling station. You get there and your name is not there. And her solution is that, oh, she's going to do exhibition. So go back and check whether, by reason of the exhibition, your name falls within a particular province station. Why are you putting this additional burden on Ghanaians? Why are you putting additional burden? Look, anybody that has an appreciation of Ghana's geography, mm -hmm. climatic conditions, will tell you that the northern regions, particularly in September, that is where they usually have their torrential rains. And most places in the north becomes immoterable. Look at what happened between Bali and the Dolly Bridge. Touching an entire region from another region. Do you think that if Madame Jemensa had factored all of these conditions in her decision, we'll be coming, we'll be having the kind of thing that we are having today? So clearly, she doesn't appreciate the work that has been given. And hence, it's not a question of incompetence. It is sheer wickedness. I, I, well, uh, sheer okay. wickedness. So, well, essentially, she, she says, amongst other things, that for the difficult to access areas, there'll be a mop-up exercise before election 2024. So these persons will not be disenfranchised. Does this in any way address that fundamental concern that you, together with the other political parties and the CSOs like CDD, had? Hello? Hello. James has this regrettable notion of herself that she's doing people a favor. Madam, you are not doing us a favor. Mm -hmm. That's public service. If you do not know, you are rendering public service. You are not doing us a favor. In fact, we don't need a favor from you. All we are asking you is to deal with the law, your own enabling CI. Constitutional instrument says that in deciding to do the registration, consider suitability and accessibility. That is what your own enabling law says. You are not doing this a favor. So at the end of the day, you say, Oh, at the end of the day, I want to uh, um, do a more pass exercise. The fact that you admit that there is a need for a mop-up exercise, for which reason you want to extend the period in some places. That alone should tell you that your singular decision to do the registration exercise in district, your district offices, instead of electoral areas, is what is causing the need for a mop-up exercise. Right. Enrique, I, I want to... Yes. And, if uh, in an electoral area, in a constituency like Anyasu mm -hmm. that has 13 electoral areas, you make available for them 
13 registration centers. I feel, would there be the need for a more power exercise? Well, certainly not. I, I, thank you very much for your time here. Um, Edwin, Eduji Tamaklo is the Director of Legal Affairs of the NDC. And they're responding to a number of issues that the Electoral Commission Chair uh, raised earlier today during that press conference. But there's something else that's been happening since this um, registration exercise began just about a week ago. Now, take a look at this. This is Aguna West. Aguna West, uh, the organizer for the MPP in the Aguna West constituency, has been accused of inflicting cutlass wounds on a member of the NDC during the ongoing limited voter registration exercise in that constituency. This is uh, Aguna West. Now, the victim, who is a, a member of the NDC communication team, is reported to be in critical condition due to the chaos that erupted between the NDC and the NPP in Aguna West. We're going to put that uh, on the screen right now, um, that uh, uh, the Aguna West office um, of the Electoral Commission in the central region. Now, uh, we understand that th there's been s a report made to the police on this matter, and then also some issues that have come to the fore related to this particular incident that happened in the Aguna West constituency, uh, where the organizer of the MPP in the, in, the, in the constituency has been accused of inflicting these wounds on the a member of the NDC communication team. This is not the only one. So in Okai Kwe North, here in the Greater Accra region, 15 persons were injured after they were attacked by masked men while waiting in a queue to be registered in the ongoing limited voter exercise. This is Okai Kwe North constituency. You see some of them in that video nursing their wounds. This was the video that was posted by the Member of Parliament for the area. Um, and the police has been duly informed of this in incident. So these 15 masked men stormed this registration center. And that's the video that you see there. Um, let, let's stay a bit further on this. And uh, have Mr. Paul uh, Abrampa is the with the Center for Democratic Development, specifically the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Kudeo. He's joining us on Zoom. Zabrampa, thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. So we, we've witnessed a number of things over the last few days since this registration exercise started. The violence that we've just showed, plus network breakdowns and so on. What's, what's Kudeo's own assessment of the last few days gone by? And, 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 and why the, there are these specific instances of um, of the violence that we have seen uh, as well, Zabampa. Because of logistical constraints and because of the timing uh, that the electoral commission announced this very exercise, we could not have time enough to mobilize resources to be able to de deploy observers as we always do. So what Cordio CDD Ghana has been doing is to do limited desk assessment based on media reports and also pulling up with our some of our people on the on the field to ascertain some of the reports that we see so that's what we've been doing so far uh based on that uh we've been following and uh, three assessments so far have come up one the exercise has uh, witnessed a uh, high patronage as seen on television and also queues uh, that are witnessed at the various registration centers. Two, uh, as usual, associated with voter registration exercises, there are also recorded incidents of violence and attacks, uh, some of which were uh, recorded both in Kumasen here, in Accra or Kai Queen or so, where max uh, people attacked some registrants who had queued early in the morning. And thirdly, uh, the EC, based on what we are hearing, is also observing the terrain to see whether there should be expansion or extension at the end of the exercise. So these are three issues that have come up so far uh, in the exercise. What you say, the violence as usual. I mean, this is a limited voter registration exercise. Violence shouldn't be a, a usual part of, of this exercise, is it not, Mr. Abrampa? With, 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 with regret. Uh, because as election observer, election monitor, you do elections and you, you, you present reports 
for the recommendations, but it looks as if our voter registration exercise uh, across all elections in the country since we re-entered into democratic dispensation. Uh, it's the exercise or the phase of the electoral process that usually record uh, tension and violence. And, and, and we just uh, came from the last one in 2020 that we witnessed uh, 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 some violence to the standards in the uh, um, uh, is it Doma West or so, uh, two vehicles were banned, motorcycles were banned, people mm -hmm. got injured, somebody died in, in the other constituencies, people also died. So it's become uh, Nakra here, Blikuma, gunshots, injuries, uh, destruction of electoral commission, uh, registration materials, and other things. So it looks as if it's becoming something that has become part and parcel of the electoral uh, uh, registration process, which you've not been able to find until to it. I was expecting that this being very limited at some few registration centers of some 268, be, and based on experiences of the past registration exercises, the police administration will be able to have uh, deploy enough security to protect the registrants. But uh, in all the places that the reports have come, it happens before uh, some, some form of enforcement are deployed. That's why I said usual, usual, because it's something that I've been witnessed over the years well, unfortunately, throughout our registration processes. It shouldn't be usual, but I thank you very much for your time. Paula Brampa Mesa is Programs Manager for Center for Democratic Development, CDD, also with the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Kodeo. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. We're getting a lot of messages from you, our viewers, on Facebook at TV3 Ghana. Um, Philip Gambire says... Uh, that people of Via, Nyariga, Awa, Zoko, Ayoni, and parts of Balungo can't access the EC office in the Bongo district due to the Via Dam spillway. Now, stay with us on the issues of flooding. It's on our radar, so we'll get there. Another set of uh, police officers coming up next here on Ghana Tonight uh, have dragged the Inspector General Police to court over what they say are delayed promotions. Tonight, we delve into the matter. Right after this quick break, stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Men, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of flamingo paint and this ordinary paint, we then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint, and the gentleman on my right will use the Flamingo Superior paint. As you can clearly see, Flamingo has the obvious better hiding. Furthermore, Flamingo has painted a much larger area. You know, one bucket of Flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market. Flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage. Flamingo paint, simply superior. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathic <laughs> A free bra would the end point what does it? I'm a quiet. No. Me just to say my name quay and pass on my name and a magina sabema. Now we fear for the one in the jarrah. You had everything. I have secret. M point is my secret. M point from your party clinic. I'm free. Free me day. I have me dinner. I have Franco Trading Enterprise at the Braca branch. A buff phones near accessories. And then you make it come on your idea. What do you say? Franco Trading Enterprise is your number one. Your television set from 24 inches to 65 inches. Air 
condition from 1.5 horsepower to 2.5 horsepower. You will see CCTV cameras, Bluetooth speakers, you will phone covers, protectors, pen drives, hard drive, iPhone, Samsung, Infinite, Huawei. It's a full beer open with a small fan beer. Franco Trading Enterprise. Franco Trading Enterprise. Full super papa. Television papa. Air conditions papa. Who wins the ultimate energy personality of the year at the seventh edition of your prestigious Ghana Energy Awards? Under the theme Ghana's Energy Transition Framework, sector institutions as building block for the 2030 to 2040 target. You can nominate yourself or an institution for categories such as CEO of the Year, Energy Investment Impact Award, Energy Signature Award, Endorsement, Validation. Industry Partners, Media Partners, TV3, Ghana Energy Awards, seven years of redefining excellence. Get ready for another cultural explosion like never before. On 21st September, Africa will witness an ultimate celebration of African diversity and flavor at the 3FM AfroConnect event. This is the place to experience the magic of African arts and creativity. You also get to unite in a sizzling Jollof War competition. Ignite Fighting a culinary showdown. Will Cote d'Ivoire hold the Jollof War title? So whether you're passionate about food, art games, or simply making new connections, 3FM Afro Connect event on the 21st of September is the place to be. Venue, Kwam and Chroma Memorial Park. If to sell, call 053-220-0927. 3FM Afro Connect. Connecting Africa and beyond. Brought to you by 3FM 92.7. Your Urban Lifestyle Radio, sponsored by Tasty Tom, ECG Power App, Festival, Mega 6 Lotto, Acel Washington. Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. We're live also on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Now also live on DSTV Channel 279. Some 40 chief inspectors in the Ghana Police Service have sued the Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Akufu Dampari, over what they describe as the refusal of the service to promote them. Now, in a writ filed at the High Court in Kumasi, the police officers claim they have been excluded from a series of promotions prompted by the service to grant special amnesty to police officers who had obtained degrees before 2020 after they were enrolled into the service. It is their case that despite serving between 25 to 30 years, the police administration have promoted also their junior colleagues under the same amnesty, but had refused to grant them entry to the police academy to facilitate their promotions to assistant superintendent of police asp now the 40 plaintiffs per the writ are arguing uh, the court to order the igp and the other defendants to promote them grant them direct access to the police academy and also uh, restore their lost income following the failure to promote them. Adib Sani is going to be joining us um, shortly on this matter. But let's put it in, in context. Um, if you recall, the first quarter of this year, over 80 police officers went to court. This time, this was in, in, in the high court also here in Accra drag the IGP to court over this same promotion issue. So if you add the first 80, over 80 to, to this 40, we're talking about over 120 senior police officers who uh, have taken on, on the IGP about these promotion matters. Take a look at this, the copies of the writ of the, the first 88 who dragged the IGP to court. Um, they were asking about issues related to promotions and, and, and the attorney general, the Ghana Police Service were all joint respondents to this. Um, the Inspector Kofi Osao and 81 others. That's about 82 of them who, who took up this matter earlier, this, this year, at the High Court. And then you, you, they raised a number of issues, including the fact that they feel they have been 
hardly dealt with. They say all the plaintiffs applied for 2017-2018 academic year study leave with pay programs for tertiary courses ranging between two years to four years. Each and every plaintiff, having qualified, was selected and made to enter into the requisite bond to serve the police service upon completion of their various courses for at least five years, upon condition that the bond would be entreated or treated when breached. Now, they say eventually that having done all this, they have been denied promotion. 82 of them in the first instance, and then 40. Now, Adib Sani, the security analyst, is joining us on the telephone. Sani, thank you. Now, I know this is something you've been following quite closely, and this is an issue that has come up a number of times at the seven-member ad hoc committee's hearings on this leaked tape. But what should be the, the way forward, especially with the committee's work in dealing with this promotions matter in their terms of reference? As you mentioned, it falls within the remits of their terms of reference. They are supposed to look into the broader issues confronting the police service and make uh, recommendations um, or for, on reforms and other, you know, strategies that would help move the full police service uh, forward, so to speak. Uh, surely the issue of promotion has been lingering for some time now. Unfortunately, on an epic basis, uh, this time around, it looks like it's just getting out of hand and there are so many officers uh, from the very lower to the very top who feel shock changed by, by the system. Um, others have complained about uh, unfair practices so far as uh, promotions are concerned. It would interest you to know that there are some personnel who come in with HND and degree and are taken straight to the rank of sergeant, something that can take an officer 12 years to achieve. But when they just come in straight up, they are, you know, placed at the sergeant's rank. And I understand, uh, based on the information I have gathered, that after a year, some of them are able to move to inspector rank. Uh, if you reach the sergeant's rank, I understand it will take you at least two, uh, at least three, four years before you are able to move to the inspector rank. Yet these guys with HNDs and degrees who just joined the service and are taken to sergeants are uh, within a year taken to inspector. And they feel, you know, really cheated. And I think it is important that we look closely at that promotion regime and see how we can refine it so um, all deserving officers get the opportunity to be promoted. Because when you look at the regulations, it's quite categorical about the fact that it's not all about certification. It's also about, you know, <clears throat> meritorious service. But how would you describe, you know, merit? Because it's subjective, and your merit might not be my merit. And that's why we have the guidelines and the procedures. But that notwithstanding, um, you know, people are still allegedly able to circumvent and uh, promote people they find favor in. But then also, the, if the committee has to consider this, what really would be the probable recommendation? Because when the IJP was asked this, he didn't give a direct answer because he says this matter is in court. But there are provisions in the CI and other regulations that governs the police's administrative process, which includes promotions, does it not? Yes, yes, it's there. And, you know, not once, not twice. Uh, the IGP has even <clears throat> had the opportunity to clear the air about the fact that promotions is not based on only paper qualification. Uh, however, uh, most ironic, ironically, the IGP was able to a large extent use paper qualification to climb within a very short period from you know a very lower rank to the rank of an you know of a of a commissioner. All right. So um what I think we should be focused do on doing going forward is to have a total reform of the police service. Surely not all is well with the police service. I mean it would be disingenuous for anyone to think that uh, the police service is fine. There's absolutely no issues with it. Maybe aesthetically outside 
we might see the good things that the police is, is doing. However, internally, I think there are some administrative, you know, hiccups that really needs to be addressed. So we are able to place the police uh, service in a position that would enable them to execute their mandate more effectively and efficiently. I thank you so much for your thoughts on this. Appreciate you. Adib Zani, security analyst. Let's stay a bit further on security matters. Coming up next, five ring leaders have been arrested for staging a march at uh, Diabene in the western region in support of their Russian mercenary group Wagner. They are to reappear in court next month. So, a security analyst is going to be joining us on this matter shortly. But let's give you an idea of what's been happening. Uh, Fact Check Ghana is a group. They've been doing some deep investigations into the activities of this group affiliated to the mercenary group Wagner. Now, they have been receiving some funds to run the activities uh, through wire transfer. Um, I want to take, take a look at this. This is what they found out. And to have them operating on our northern border is particularly distressing for us in Ghana. President Akufuado some months ago raising concerns about activities of Russia mercenary group Wagner in neighboring Burkina Faso. Months down the line, latest investigation by Ghana Fact has revealed detailed infiltration of the mercenary group into the country. Through a series of social media platforms, Contact was established with one Michael Siedu, an administrator of Mercado News, a Facebook blog with 1,500 followers that publishes pro-Russian content. Managing editor at Ghana Fact, Rabi Al Hassan, explains further the connection. As part of the investigations, we chanced on a Telegram channel that also exposed the um, modus operandi of the group uh, which uh, involved some funding of the activities, some wire transfers to the ringleaders via Western Union. Uh, in total, we understand through some crowdfunding, they were able to raise about 6,000. So that's the situation now. And uh, we've been looking at the activities of the Wagner Group on the continent of Africa. This is it. Here's what we do know per uh, desktop research, right? Um, they, they have presence in Mali, Burkina Faso, Libya, Chad, Sudan, Cameroon, Central Africa Republic, Zimbabwe, and Madagascar as well. So gradually spreading their, their reach and influence, and if you want to call it infiltration on the continent. So that's the Wagner Group's operation, uh, per how things look like. In, in Mali, they, 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 they have a widespread you know, uh, presence in that country. Uh, Dr. Victor Doke is a lecturer at the Kofiana International Peacekeeping Training Center. He's a security consultant. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. And I know this is something you've been, you've been looking into quite closely. We've seen the operations of this group as per the president's own session in Burkina Faso and, and up north of this country. This development of these five persons being arrested in, in the Western region, worrying to say the least, is it not? Yeah, very concerned and afraid. In a sense that when you have um, young, abled men engaging in um, activities related to the internet in the form of trying to recruit, that's the way I see it, and then eventually radicalize some of these young people into a group that has been labeled a terrorist group to operate in the country, then it's very serious and poses a security threat to the entire institution and the people of the country. I see. According to the fact check Ghana's investigations, Dr. Dukai, these people receive money through wire transfers from people outside of the country to finance the operations. To the extent for, for them to raise funds, operate for this long, poses the question of how our intelligence security services are operating. Now, if we have experts in a cyber area, right, in the security agencies, then these 
issues or events should have come to their notice, especially when you have Wagner Group operating in Mali, Burkina Faso, Central African Republic, and elsewhere, then the institutions with regards to early warnings and then the alertness should have been raised and countered. And this shouldn't have gotten where it has for funds to be raised. And then these guys assembled to have a sort of demonstration, then it's warring. Now, the question is, how far have they gone? Do they have a larger network than what is perceived to have happened? Or what are the operations, their mode of operations? What, are, what is the agenda? Who are these stakeholders, i.e., sponsors from outside and all that that can be linked to these groups and eventually uh, agencies would have to sort of like issue a warrant for their arrests if they can but for these young people who have been picked up there needs to be a thorough investigation now there has to be a check down with regards to the operations for the last six months or even the past year you have to know their whereabouts who they contacted. You have to even go into their bank accounts to know the kind of funds, where it came from, apart from the funds they use for demonstrations and their activities. You have to know their network of friends and even go into their family line to know who is involved and who is not involved. And then we'll let the law take its course. Because as far as we know, Wagner has been labeled a terrorist group and any group yeah. associated with it is also labeled a terrorist group and therefore my that's been dealt with. in fact the uk officially banned the wagner group as a terrorist organization just about three days ago um you know so but b beyond these five persons who have been arrested in the western region in what form should the investigation take dr doke after this this arrest and this identification that we've seen well we live in a society where we have regard for the law, irrespective. Now, I've seen a charge with regards to uh, these five picked up, and the charge I read is um, something pertaining to destabilizing the peace of the country or to overthrow the government. Now, what well, you cannot argue on this charge, because then if you see that any group right and in this sense wanting or have that idea to even perpetrate this kind of activity example over trade government through its activities then the law can take any form in any dispensation and the charges are right in that <clears throat> in, in this instance so with this charge we just hope that the court date that is set all parties involved will come and then um, prosecution will go on. Other than that, then it means further investigations needs to be done to ascertain how and when this group even emanated in this country. Right. Dr. Victor, Dr. I appreciate your time. I, I thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Dr. Victor Doke is a lecturer of the Kofiana International Peacekeeping Training Center. He's a security consultant on this um, five persons running a group affiliated to the Wagner group. They've been identified and arrested. This is something that we're keeping a close eye on. We're updating you in the subsequent days as to how investigations uh, play out. But the, 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 there was a situation where some t somewhere in the northern region where residents within the Sola and Bole areas of the Savannah region have appealed to the roads ministry to, as a matter of urgency, fix the broken Dolly Bridge as Saturday dusk to dawn dumper washed away portions of the Bole Sola Wa Highway, leaving hundreds of commuters stranded. And obviously, the people, eligible voters there, could not even go over this to go and register. And that's what you're seeing on the screen there. Information that we're getting now is that the regional minister is set to visit the area tomorrow. We don't know what's going to be happening, but stay with us here on Ghana tonight. We will be there tomorrow and we'll be updating you. I want to say thank you so much for staying with us on behalf of the rest of the team. 
It's the beginning of a good week. Thank you so much for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. Join us same time tomorrow. I am Alfred Akonsi. Have a good night. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint, superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage, simply superior.